I've said it a million times. I'm going to say it again. If you plan on managing your own portfolio, you need to disentangle your investment decisions from your political beliefs. In politics, you've got your team. You want your team to win. That's fine. But the stock market doesn't care about your partisan affiliation. Trying to invest as a Democrat or Republican is a great way to lose money. I know so many conservatives who hated President Obama. They let that drive their decision making and they missed out on some huge gains. Now people on the other side of the spectrum are making the same mistake with President Trump. Your likes and dislikes are only going to lead you astray, people. Consider what happened yesterday when Trump said that he got two phone calls from the Chinese and that they want to make a deal, but then China immediately denied it while still making some conciliatory noises. First, y- you got to admit, I mean, <laughs> those calls were well-timed. If the calls happened, they were, let's say, perfect. Coming into Monday morning, it seemed like we were going to have a huge stock market decline. People didn't get to sell as much as they wanted to on Friday. So the setup was ugly, and things could have really gone off the rails. Then we hear about these calls, and the market comes roaring right back. Whether or not Trump was telling the truth, that was always going to be a positive for stocks because it showed he was willing to talk rather than continue to ratcheting up tensions. Hey, you can hate Trump. You can root for a recession for all I care, so we'll get booted out of the office, out of office. But you can't let that color your approach to the stock market. You have to think about these events in terms of outcomes. Will it send stocks higher? Will it send stocks lower? The event, that's one thing. The outcome is what we care about on Mad Money. By the same token, there's a widespread belief that the People's Republic of China is all powerful, that they play a long game, that their government can withstand any amount of pain so we can't possibly win the trade war. Now, for the past 40 years, the Communist Party has done a fantastic job of managing their economy. They put 400 million people to work. They absolutely play for keeps. But if you think the Chinese Communist Party is all powerful, how come they seemingly lost control of Hong Kong? It's one of the largest, most prosperous cities. Again, think outcomes. The long game doesn't matter. You think China will try to outlast Trump? I say good luck. Unless Biden wins the Democratic nomination, and I think he's pretty clearly lost a step, there's a good chance that the candidate will be even tougher on China than the current administration. They think President Trump is mad at them for stealing American jobs. Wait until they have to deal with President Warren, who's mad about the jobs and even madder about them despoiling the environment. That's why I'm generally confident that we're going to win this darn war, although I have no idea how long it will drag on or how much collateral damage we might have end up in the process. Let me make this very simple. Here on Mad Money, our only agenda is higher stock prices because you tend to own stocks. Think of me as a dollar sign represented by a man. So take it from someone who knows. You don't rack up big gains in the market by trying to judge politicians. You need to judge the outcomes. And in terms of outcomes, I've got to tell you, the character of the person in the office has very little to do with whether the market goes higher or lower. Totally separate question. Think of it like this. Warren G. Harden, not a great guy, but Harding was great for the stock market. Herbert Hoover, by all counts, a terrific guy. Terrible for the stock market. Jimmy Carter, good guy. Not so good for the stock market. Sometimes it lines up the other way. Nixon, bad guy. Side over, bad market. But mostly, people, there's no correlation. Do me a favor. Don't try to invent one. Stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.